welcome to Last Orders, the podcast about the podcast. We are getting to talk with some of the uh, players, the cast, uh, about the recent episode of The Crowded Tavern. More specifically, episode number eight, What Happens in the Tunnels. With me today, I have my trusted friend and ally, Amanda. Say hi, Amanda. Hi, Amanda. <laughs> hi. <laughs> How's it going? Good, good. We also have a lot of guests today. We have uh, the one and only. Um, nope, he couldn't make it. How about? No, he couldn't make it either. <laughs> we have Adam, <laughs> aka Strange Cyber. Hello. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Glad you could be here. Me too. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I've had no time to think about any of the standard questions you're going to ask me because I was a last minute <laughs> substitution. I haven't even watched the episode yet. <laughs> That's okay. I never watch the episode. I wing all of these things. <laughs> oh, don't tell Marty. I give, I give myself a good three hours of, of like sanding dice where I'm watching the episode normally, and it's like just the whole time I'm thinking, like, Marty's going to ask me what my favorite part is. Marty's going to ask me. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, let's do things a bit differently then, because, you know, I also prepared questions for um, <laughs> the two other people who couldn't sadly be here today. Last minute cancellation, and you, Adam, were the only one that actually could jump in and, and, and you know, um, we are short notice, so let's do things a di- bit differently. So, um, anything you guys want to talk about today? Anything that you thought would be fun to talk about from the episode, or just anything else? Maybe I don't know. <laughs> no. Okay. Well, that's it. <laughs> thank you so much for to say. <laughs> thank you so much for listening. Thank you so much for watching. And this is it. <laughs> So any favorite moments, anything that, you know, sticks out in your mind from the last episode? Or was it just, well, a, was it just a boring one and not memorable It was not all? boring, but I think that <laughs> that the moment that sticks out the most for me is actually one that you may have made a, a TikTok slash short for, and that is the assless chaps of Auburn. <laughs> <laughs> yep. It, that was definitely something sticking out, that's correct. Uh, <laughs> Pardon? <laughs> <laughs> the, the ass, the yeah, ass, oh, yeah, obviously. Yeah, mm-hmm, yeah. Not mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, you know that that was hilarious, and yes, it is indeed turning, uh, being turned into a TikTok, um, and it will. Uh, it probably already has released at this point. So if you haven't um, uh, checked it out, check out YouTube Shorts or TikTok. Go do it. We have one of the, we have one of each. Um, we do. Yeah. We do, and Marty really likes when you like the the YouTube shorts and un- view, and view them a, and view them and also view them yeah. and comment on them. Yeah, it's true. Like he sends me a message every time. Like I get almost daily updates with like the view count <laughs> of our our YouTube shorts, and I'm like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> I am I am trying to figure out YouTube, but it's not easy because it's not easy. we had two shorts um, that performed like two views something like that and then i was like all right uh, i knew that both of them had like the f bomb in both of them so i was like let's try and censor mm. one of them and re-release it and then it got 1200 views and i was like oh whoa okay, wow, okay. <laughs> two views 1200 views okay maybe that's maybe that's it maybe it's you know maybe that's a sign <laughs> maybe youtube doesn't I don't like think swearing it, I, I don't think it's all necessarily the like the content of the video itself as well i think the fact that you uploaded that again now after we've had a bunch of successful youtube shorts it's probably getting more attention just anyway regardless of content yeah i don't know because then i took the next one the other one that has had the f bomb in it and i censored that one and it got two views again and i'm just like really okay i don't get this i don't i i thought i had figured something (laughs) out but Mm. it's like i thought i had figured tiktok out kind of i mean I, i'm definitely i'm definitely not very good at it and like with all of our videos were getting between like 750 and 900 views and i was like this is really good but then like in there there's one that's got 62 views in and amongst all of the 700 to 900 views it's like <laughs> 700 800 967 800 400 and i'm just like is it like way longer than the others no they're all <laughs> 59 seconds yeah. It's just a very, very strange thing. I, I really, I don't know. 
Social don't, media don't. is a mystery to me. Yeah. Hello, um, um, I write social media posts for a living. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't understand how to make it work. I am, I'm still trying to figure that out too. So yeah, you're not the only one. <laughs> At least I don't do have to do management anymore. I just write. <laughs> but yeah, but, uh, but but that being said, when I cannot figure out how it works, I am actually very much enjoying uh, doing uh, making those small TikToks. It's it's really good fun to me. So, um, mm-hmm. um, Amanda, is your cat snoring? She is okay. absolutely <laughs> snoring her absolute face off. And fair um, enough. I was just I don't I don't know how to be like kick cat wake up. Uh, that that is perfectly fine. Uh, <laughs> my cat used to snore as well. I was just like, what is that in the background that I can hear? <laughs> But I can hear it now. It, it's definitely snoring. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I listen for it. Yeah. I can hear it. I guess. Mm-hmm. I guess I have to remember when I edit this to turn down the the music so everyone can hear the snoring cat in the background. <laughs> <laughs> of course. Yeah, she's. Uh... Um, but yeah, in terms of uh, my favorite, I don't know if there's a moment, but like I really liked. Uh, what Danny was doing with Auburn. In fact, I almost said last last orders um, that I had a complaint for for like wizards that a minute is not enough time to do meaningful role play with a shifted character. Mm-hmm. Um, so I definitely like. It's unfortunate because like ev- like a lot was going on that episode. Yeah. So I feel like we almost didn't do the like the concept of of him being more permanently shifted like justice almost mm. but like yeah i i was hoping we'd see something like that and we did and i liked that and it wasn't really a moment it was kind of a thread through the whole episode yeah yeah um danny messaged me after the you know the previous episode um and was like hey how do you feel about if if auburn doesn't switch back and i was just like oh my god i love it uh, i'll allow it uh, and we we agreed to make i made some quick rules about you know um uh, constitution saving throws uh, obviously in the beginning they are lower but they will increase throughout the episode so um, and then he got down so I guess he, he you know uh, unshifted uh, automatically by that but um, but yeah when he messaged me with that idea I was like oh my god I love it let's go let, let you know let's spend the rules and see where this is going because it makes sense for the character and it, mm-hmm. it's not anything that is you know groundbreakingly breaking the game either I, I think the main thing is that he gets you know 10 feet more of movement and I'm like that's you know that's fine you're going mm-hmm. into tunnels anyway you're not going to need it or use it anyway in there so um, yeah so yeah. no I thought that it was really awesome for his character development as well um and there was like no discussion between the cast members about it because like i'm sure if you if you heard the episode i was like how long are are you are you you still (laughs) supposed to be shifted like i feel like that minute is well past and he was like yep mm -hmm." we 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 did talk about that as well we did talk about it as well where i was like do we should i you know Pay, will the players notice or should I you know make hints through the way but you, you did notice on your own so I was happy that I didn't need to do too much uh, work there so so thank you for noticing that open didn't shift <laughs> no, you're, you're I'll tell welcome. you what else as a, as a, as a moment um, as well when you first called for Orvin to take his first constitution saving throw and we're all just like we're sat there, we think everything's fine, we think we're just having a conversation, and then the DM is randomly at one of the players, hey, can you just make a constitution save for me real quick? I'm pretty sure you could probably clip all of our faces at that moment, and we're like, oh shit, what the hell? Mm-hmm. Yeah, 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 that was a fun moment. <laughs> so yeah, no, I'm really looking forward to see what Dan is going to do with, with Open, and I'm so, it's really sad that he can't be here today. On, you know, unluckily, his his internet decided to of all days die today, and probably won't be back until tomorrow. So, um, it would have been awesome to get him on here and and talk talk to him about it because you know Auburn. I feel like the, in the last few episodes, Auburn has been the one character progression that has felt you know filled the out the the, the space the most in, in 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 our in our little show. So, um, so yeah. So I guess. Next time, next last orders, we'll get him on and we'll we'll grill him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah, grill him like the fire and acid grilled his the pants off of his butt. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Sorry, 
I just loved that moment, actually, now that we're speaking of moments, mm. where, because I did sort of tease that, you know, there was still this leftover nothing that had run away, and now it was sort of like floating towards you backwards, and, and because it was trapped inside the uh, gelatinous cube, but you couldn't see the cube um, because it was dark, and I don't even know if I asked for a perception check or something, maybe I did, I don't remember, but... Um, but I just loved when when I asked, what are you going to do? Everyone else was like, let's, I'm, I'm moving backwards. I'm moving backwards. What's going on here? And Auburn is just like, nope, it's charging forwards and just jumping in to grab this nothing and basically jump straight into the gelatinous cube. And I think the moment was extremely funny to me because I knew what was there. I, I think if you see my reaction as well, I was like, okay, is that what you're doing? I, okay, I love it. <laughs> yep. No, it was so unexpected and of of Auburn, like so unexpected that like that was what he did. I was like, holy shit, <laughs> this is not cool. But also like it was really fucking epic. But like this is um, dangerous. <laughs> So what were you, if you remember, what were you thinking in the moment when you, when you didn't know what was going on yet uh, and you just see this thing moving backwards towards you, sort of, but not moving? Um, I didn't know what was going on, if I'm honest. And I don't know that Neza clued in right away either. Hmm. Like it was only when Auburn leaped forward and was like sucked in, suspended in the air. And she was like, oh, I know what this is. <laughs> Shit, this isn't really great. <laughs> how, 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 what, what, what was going through your head and what was going through Strix's head at that point? <laughs> Strix was maybe even more clued into what was happening than me, if I'm honest. I feel like Strix has more knowledge of gelatinous cubes than Adam does. So, um... <laughs> I wonder if Strix had clocked what was going on, but I, yeah, I had no idea. Um, I mean, obviously something weird was going on, uh, uh, but I was wondering if it was maybe more like a possession or something mm. that had happened to this uh, this creature. Uh, I, I think I'd figured it was the one that I scared off because I think you described the pose as like a yeah. Um, but yeah, I I was not on board with like I, I hadn't figured out what was going on with it until um until you uh until, well until Auburn decided to just sort of go for it and um <laughs> yeah oh yeah and then I hard. smacked him in the face with a stone didn't I <laughs> <laughs> you did you did indeed um but yeah but yeah it, it really hit hard and um because I, I I had boosted it up, and when I saw how hard it actually hit, I was sort of like, "Oh wait, did I did I overdo it?" <laughs> but but then you know it, it kind of moved that fast um, and stuff like that. So I think it actually worked out. I think all of you got the scare. Open was down in you know in in two hits. Um, mm -hmm. So I think I I got the scare into you, which I think mm. is sometimes needed, you know. So it's not just, just like, oh, this is you know we just. We can do whatever we want. Nothing's oh, yeah. going to happen. Mm. <laughs> oh yeah, like that scare was uh, yeah, <laughs> a lot. Like unexpected and needed to kind of like this is a dangerous situation. Like our beast of a character, like our beast of mm. a companion, is down. Fuck, mm. like, this is not good. <laughs> And to be 100% honest, uh, a little bit behind the scenes uh, um, uh, info here is that I actually gave them a ranged attack as well because I just wanted, didn't hit as hard, um, mm. but I just wanted to make sure just in case people were, you know, just turning around, running, straight up running away from it just to have something because it cannot move that quickly. But mm. um, when I saw how hard it hit and that Orban was down, I was like, I'll just, this doesn't exist it's something i made up so it's not there anymore poof gone you know so um but yeah um but i i, I actually i'm starting to start enjoying you know making my own monsters or upgrading ex existing mm. uh monsters to, and because it's something that it it's very difficult but if you don't do it you don't get the experience out of it so true um, so yeah so so marty was pleased 
<laughs> Yay, Marty. Yeah. Um, yeah. No, they hit hard. I was mm. like genuinely scared that we were going to like TPK on that. Like, <laughs> I was like, mm, mm, here, mm, this isn't good. Oh, well, yeah, because I think we figured like Strix and uh, Arlim got, got, would get one banged by. Mm-hmm. Like like that thing, so it's like we need to be a long way from this thing. <laughs> yeah. But uh, speaking of Alim, I think he was uh, not to take away any from any anyone else because everyone did really well. But I think Alim must have been the MVP of this fight. Mm. Those heels were. We would have TPK'd. Yeah, definitely. Without those heels, like there was there, we, every single one of us would have been down. Yeah, and he even got the killing blow mm-hmm. so, mm. on the last one. So yeah, he's not useless. No, he's not useless. No, not all the time. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> which is another you know again very sad because Rick was supposed to be here as well. So very sad that we mm-hmm. couldn't talk to him, uh, talk to them about it. Um, so, but yeah, we'll have to have to ask ask them another day about it. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, would you like to talk about the other insider information about that episode? Which one are you referring to? Why Neza was so insistent on going back in the dark, scary tunnels? <laughs> <laughs> um, yes, because I, it, it, you know, creating these conduits is a key, very key moment in this campaign, and. Um, the way that it happened was, you know, going into those tunnels and meeting the, the Gelatinous Cube there was not something that I had planned in that way, per se. Um, because I wanted it to happen a little bit more, um, just like naturally. I, I gave a lot of hints to Amanda, uh, aka Nessa, in, in her storyline to this um but I also realized that, you know, it's it's like if we play every other week. It's like, you know, months and months and months ago that she got mm-hmm. all this information. And um, so I had to key a man in a little bit on some of the, the things that I sort of needed uh, uh, Nessa to, to, to know and, and happen. Um, so, so, yeah, it was 100% why uh, you needed to go into the tunnels because the... Um, um, uh, the Galatians cubes were there, and that would trigger Nessa's mind, uh, trigger our memory from mm. episode one. So mm. if you missed it, uh, go back and watch episode one because that's a very key information that uh, Frain, her, her lab partner, was giving giving her. Mm-hmm. So it's true. The conversation was, "I'm really sad nobody went like you didn't go down the tunnels and you didn't follow like you didn't like you didn't let the the nothings go down the tunnels." And I was like. That's okay, we're just like too powerful, you know, it's fine. <laughs> Marty, like, so it didn't work out your way. He's like, no, you really need to go down the tunnels. <laughs> and I was like, okay, hint, hint, nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Yeah. And I don't know how many people said to Neza, like, why did you insist we went down the tunnels? And I was like, I'm just doing, following DM's orders. <laughs> <laughs> Strix yeah. would have wanted to go anyway, I think. There was too much interesting stuff we'd already found in those caves to not explore the rest of them yeah yeah i think and i also think it's one of those cases where we're trying to do make this a limited series and maybe that was maybe a wrong move um but you know we're working we're going down that road now so that's how it is but because you know since if it was not limited if we had more time to pursue this afterwards then you know i could just place this you know those cubes another place in, in the story so it wouldn't really be a, a, an issue but because we sort of had have like a deadline something we're moving towards it's also you know i've tr- i have i'm doing my best to just have hands off and let you guys do what you feel like you need to do in the situation but um I, and i th- but i think i realized probably an episode too late <laughs> that uh, I probably need to push you know the story elements a little bit more but but again you know you you live and you do stuff and you learn from it so um, so yes yeah, so and we'll sometime figure out a day to record our last episode <laughs> <laughs> yeah I was gonna say like it's it's so well a good saying like oh maybe we won't have a time limit to think but if you tried arranging anything this summer like my god <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah so, but anyway, we'll, we'll get there eventually. Um, I have even 
I haven't convinced myself fully yet, but I have sort of thought about maybe I can end season one a place where we could actually pick it up as a season two, but it also means that I need to figure out more stuff for a potential season two. So we, um, so yeah, cool. but I don't know yet. We'll we'll see. We still need to get through nine and ten and see where we end up, and then then I'll, you know, then I'll know where 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 we're headed because mm -hmm. sometimes it's also sometimes things just take longer and players do fucking weird shit you know <laughs> i don't know what you're talking sorry about. <laughs> no it's fine it's perfect it's it, it, it's part of the game it's how it should be so <laughs> mm -hmm. um so yeah you also got a little bit more information about who made these you know goblins turn into other mm. twisted goblins Mm-hmm. That surprised the heck out of me. Genuinely. <laughs> Strix Good. is not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> Strix is Strix is now worried, is very worried in fact, that he actually has an accurate read on um on Waterman, what he's all about and what he's gonna do. Okay. Tell me more. <laughs> yeah, okay, I, I guess I could talk about it here. Like so he's told us that like oh he wants to experience everything there is and 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 do all the things and yeah like like obviously that doesn't seem to be limited to nice things uh and he seems <laughs> to have been messing around with these uh goblins which is like yeah okay that makes sense that that that's that's a thing you could do uh it's another one off his list and so Strix is really, really worried because when we had that conversation, it was like, well, it's not clear he's telling the truth, but if he is telling the truth, I don't think there's any way he's going to turn down the opportunity to come to a brand new world full of technology he's never seen and shit. So like, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that's not a thing that we would want to happen. Why not? Uh... I mean, so like, you know, te technically that, that, that other world is just a throwaway world that I just made mm. specifically for this, you know, so send him over there and let him destroy it. I don't need it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I really want to write like some supplements for Baraguo and I can't do that if it's like destroyed. It's also <laughs> everybody's in character home, so <laughs> good luck selling the place on that. <laughs> um... But yeah, I mean, so I guess that's sort of maybe the gives you a bit of insight into Strix's sort of driving motivation the last few episodes since we met Auburn and why he's like, no, no, we need to have all of the power and Watson needs to have none of it because <laughs> there's no way we don't fight in the end. All right. So, but how how hmm? fighting Benjamin's patron actually work? Like, like. Would it kill him? <laughs> or you would he just like become no longer a warlock? Like... <laughs> you will find out in episode 11 or 12. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. Who knows? I don't know. <laughs> Depends what mm. you players do, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. So. I really liked also that Neza and Strix had a little bit of bonding going on mm. with talking about, you know, magic and mm. and spell balls. <laughs> <laughs> what did we decide we were going to call them? I actually can't remember. Con I don't think did, did we settle on something? Okay, conduits. Yeah, I think conduits was the word that I I really actually really liked it when when someone said it and then I couldn't remember it and I was like, ah, oh, when was it again? But yeah, conduits. I think it's a it's a nice way of putting it. So. Yeah. yeah. No, that was that was good. I enjoyed um, all the all the role play, um, and I I have to put my hands up and apologize because I absolutely thought that we were asking Warden for his magic, <laughs> um, not Thrak. Like yeah. I just, me the player, just hmm. I was just way off. I didn't even consider the dwarf that I hate. I, Neza hates. <laughs> there, there was a lot of information coming out of Nessa's brain all of a sudden very mm. quickly um, when the DM got to possess Nessa a little bit. So mm -hmm. I, I am not um, uh, I'm not surprised that you might have missed two key things. Um, so 
and one of them being that Thrag is the one with the elemental um, mm -hmm. I remember magic. having that conversation after I was like oh yeah um, but there was some because there was a part with Wartham as well that I uh, that Nessa was riffing off uh, as well um, when I was Nessa I, I, I talked about as well so I mean I can understand the, the confusion also because I think that I said you do know someone with uh elemental magic and then I never said the name I was just mm. like because everybody was nodding and I was like all right they get it it's Thrak no problem here and I probably should have just been like just to clarify it's a Thrak <laughs> uh -huh. but that's okay yeah yeah I mean I'm sure everybody else may have gotten that and my brain was just not no I think it, I think it set up a really nice moment as well though because because sort of it's almost as if like 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 where you were like uh Oh, we need to. Uh, we need to get. We need to get Waterman. It's like, oh, there's someone else we need to get first. And you were like, who? And it's like, oh, it's, we need. To, we need to get Thrag first. And like, oh, that's even worse. <laughs> <laughs> I really. I don't know if I like or dislike that. You know, <laughs> Thrag is worse than Waterman <laughs> in your minds. <laughs> Maybe just Nez's mind. I'm not sure. I mean, you know, he's less scary, but he's also less competent. We don't have to be scared of him killing us, but we do have to be scared of him just blowing up all the conduits, apparently. I, I seriously just... I, because I posted the, the rolls he made mm -hmm. um, uh, on Twitter, and I just love that he just keeps rolling below a 10 every mm -hmm. freaking time. Not even that, probably below a 7. Um, and he only made, like, one good roll, and that was in the very end where Strix were helping him. So, I mean, I didn't make it up. You know, he was really struggling with, with making this conduit, so... <laughs> Because I, I think it's obviously a big important plot point that we've got these things that I could sort of sort of see you, Marty, like in your eyes, like, players, please help me. He's rolled so terribly, I can't <laughs> pretend this is a success. <laughs> I mean, I guess, I mean, obviously, no matter what would have happened, I would have eventually made it, you know, succeed in some shape or form. So I think I also just played into it a little mm -hmm. bit of like, well, you need to help him because holy <laughs> shit, he's... I'm so fucking bad at rolling. <laughs> so, yeah. um, but no, I, I think it, it's again that thing that you know sometimes the dice just tell you know mm -hmm. fun stories that you didn't have in your mind to begin with. So, um, so I, uh, you know, it's just about just lean into it. I think that's part, sort of what I'm starting to learn as well. Um, just lean into those moments and be like, yeah, that's how it is. Because I think in our private game in the beginning, when something didn't go the way that I wanted and I had made a roll for it and I didn't like the roll, I just flunked the roll and we're like, yeah, no, it happens anyway, you know? Um, and I think that it's something that... <laughs> what? <laughs> there you go. You didn't, you didn't know. <laughs> um, and the, the, ex the thing is that actually one time um, I forgot to make, make the role private, so it went out public. And then I was like, yeah, I don't like this role. And I flunked it and said something else. And then the players were like, but you, you, rolled, you rolled a 10. <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> wait, what? <laughs> and then I realized that I've been rolling you know, public roles that, all night. That happened, yeah. <laughs> so. Yeah. But yeah, but no, I think that sometimes it's also just important to, to lean into it and be like, yeah, it didn't go my way, but everyone is having a great time, so, you know. Mm -hmm. And this is a story that's going to be told. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, um, so yeah, actually, now that we do have these conduits, a lot of you uh, got um, leveled up to level 12 again, Yay. back to where you started, finally, some might say. Um, and we got a community question from Adam. Who weren't supposed to be in this episode. <laughs> um, and Adam asked, tease something about your level 12 character that we haven't seen yet. Um, so, Adam, do you have anything we haven't <laughs> seen yet from your character? Uh, I think we're yet to see, like, the scale of the destruction Strix might be willing to inflict if uh, if pushed. Interesting. That's terrifying. <laughs> um, thanks. Marty, make a level four again. <laughs> <laughs> um, so uh, how actually how have it how, how has it been to have made this level twelve character and then just seen scaled down to level four at the uh, at the first in the first episode? 
how has the, the, the road up until here been so far and, and how excited are you that you're back in level 12? Uh, it was, for Styrix at least, it was quite rough because, um, I mean, I guess I had the, like, like I had all my level 12 minions that I'd animated at level 12 and, and were therefore a lot more powerful than anything I should have, should have had access to at level 4. Mm-hmm. But um, for Strix himself, it's like he had no combat spells. <laughs> because, like because of the way the the D system works, it's like well, I'm building a level twelve character, so like level one and two spells are weaker than my cantrips at level twelve. Why would I ever take those? <laughs> um, and uh, it, I guess it also doesn't help that like for like thematically for Strix, I wanted to uh, like stick to certain kinds of damage that felt right for him. Mm-hmm. So he has like acid spells, he has like lightning spells, but like no fire spells, they're not allowed. And 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 certain other ones, it's just like, yeah, that's a, that's, that's a nice spell, but like it doesn't work for Strix in my opinion, so I, I'm not going to take it. Mm. Um, and and to be fair, it is actually kind of refreshing to see a uh, wizard without fireball. Mm. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> just put. I mean, lightning up. bolt's a good spell. Like mm. just just putting it out there, like. It's it's basically as good as fireball, guys. You should use lightning bolt more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in in my uh, other private game that I have, in, uh, where I'm the player, um, we have a, we have a wizard in there as well. Who, who actually, we actually sort of were in a pinch um, because we were just surrounded by enemies, and I was and I, my character was like, oh no, actually not my character. Marty was like. Hey, just use your your electricity spells on me because it's fine. I have this shield that actually halves the damage, so you know, go nuts. We sort of met a game a little bit, but it was would also have been such a cool moment. So he actually ended up doing that, but he rolls so freaking high anyway that by halving the damage <laughs> didn't really matter, and I went down anyway. So, <laughs> but uh, yeah, he, he saved the day. So um, yeah, there is other things that fireball. Wink, wink, nudge, mm. nudge. Go check them out. It's if you're into that kind of thing as well, Vitriolic Sphere. It's a level above Fireball, but it's actually a, like quite a bit stronger than Fireball, even upcast. So yeah. look out for that one as well, guys. <laughs> Good advice. How about you, Amanda? Any level 12 shenanigans we should know about with Nessa? Um, there are some things. Um, I because She's a monk. She, she hits with a weapon. She goes bang you know with her with her quarter stuff so like nothing super out there mm. um but she does have a movement speed of 50 feet mm. so like can you picture her running like she's just gonna be like see ya Whoop! <laughs> like 100 <laughs> feet away and like and i just found out like as well she can run up a tree like yeah. she can run up a vertical surface. She could go a hundred feet just up the side of a surface. Like, what is that about? Like, that's so <laughs> just, cool. Just, just monk stuff. Just monk stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and because I picked the way of the drunken master as her uh, as her tradition, um, she has the drunkard's luck, which is, um, is um, canceling disadvantage on some rolls, which is pretty cool. If I want to do that. Nice. So, unfortunately, nothing really, really cool except for the running. Like, I'm like, she can, I mean, you she are, can run across water. I think everyone, everyone is in agreement that you need to fight a dragon at some point. So maybe it does. Yeah, I was gonna say maybe yeah. it does come in handy that you can run up walls or tree trunks or something like that. Who, who knows? You know, um, she can run up the side of a wall and then go with her quarter staff down right onto the dragon's head and split it open from yeah, the head. one hit, one hit, one hit, yeah. Sure. Well, mm-hmm. as you have proved in our private game, Marty, I am not allowed to one-shot things, so... <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were allowed to one-shot things, you just didn't roll high enough. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> wait, we'll wait until you see the high level that spell Strix has access to. You're going to have to be buffing things HP. <laughs> Oh, don't worry. I, I, I've already done that, um, doing a, a specific <laughs> fight where I wanted someone to get away, um, but it, it still didn't work out. So It didn't work. No. Um, so yeah. I, I can't remember if you did this on the podcast or not, but you've already admitted to us that you accidentally nerfed them like just because you forgot yeah, part of what they were yes, supposed to be able to do. I, I did that yeah, last time on the podcast as well, that, that yeah, I, I did... 
uh, by accident nerfed them because they were actually supposed yeah. to uh, have uh, two hits and a large one, three hits. But instead, they ended up mm. having one and two instead of two and three because I just I just remembered something about you know well they have multi attacks or oh it's the large one that, okay and then I just went with it you know in the mm-hmm. moment but. I was wondering in that fight, it's like, Strix is still up. Wow, that uh, <laughs> that mirror image spell really works. And it's like, oh no, Strix should definitely have gone down. <laughs> so yeah, but I, I think it's again one of those things where, you know, it comes with experience, um, where in, in that moment, first of all, I mean, it's not going to, um, it sounds like, I, I'm not trying to excuse anything, it, it's totally on me, but it was like two, over two weeks ago that I planned that fight. Um, mm because the fight lasted over two ep- or the the cave lasted over two episodes so i didn't fully remember things and i didn't three yeah i mean in total it was three but but yeah but um but yeah anyway so um so i didn't i should have sat down and check up on the on the monsters and stuff before but i just went in there and i was like what could go wrong? I I know this. I've done this. It's fine. It's fine. So. What I'm hearing you say is that season two should be every week. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I am not against it. Um, but there's oh, really? a lot okay, more I, people I, than the three of us that need to be considered in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. I I, I assumed Marty would just be shutting that down and just be like, no, that it. One week no, Marty's not like, yes, let's breath. fucking do it. Let's go. I mean, <laughs> I think, you know, nine times out of ten I'm fine with it because, you know, then I will have stuff planned and stuff like that. But I also know that when you have such a tight thing, especially something that's live streamed, I, I want it to be, you know, um, of a certain quality. And I still, I, I myself still still keeps fucking that part up still, you know. So, um, <laughs> uh, so just planning something um, for every week can sometimes be a little bit uh you know a lot of work to 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 get done i mean i I'm hats off to you know some people like uh matthew mercer who, who does this every week probably plan stuff for the for the next few sessions um i mean it it's sure they also probably doing that a little bit more full time than, than than we are but still you know <laughs> um still it, it does take time to 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 plan these things out um so sometimes it, i think it also hmm? uh, like I, said, I think it also varies by dm style as well yeah just some dms are very like improv heavy like like yeah. they'd rather go in with just a few bits and, and a vague idea and and then sort of go with what happens in the session and other dms uh like to have a lot planned out in advance and it's it's not a judgment on like which style is better or anything but like you, you kind of have to accept what your style is and and and, yeah. and work within the confines like a, yeah. a, a prep heavy dm is going to need a lot lot longer to prep than than, than someone that improvises mm-hmm. but, but then again then we, when we have something like this where we just been through this whole cave and and tunnels and stuff like that you know i i, I you know planned that now you know over three sessions ago now because it's taking us three mm. sessions to get through it all um so then again then you know it's it's very light obviously you're still going to do some planning because something pro- so things always happen that you know i didn't take into account or players decide to do something and so obviously i still go in and 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 look at what i have done and and or what you know had, has happened and and if there's anything i can do to to move things in a certain direction or stuff like that so i mean it's not like there's no planning at all but still you know uh, if, if if you do it correctly you can plan quite far ahead uh, um, in in some in, in some cases you know so um but then then there's like Strix didn't even have undead minions out to bog things down no exactly yeah um so so but going into the next session you know uh, uh, uh I have not really too much planned for the next. I have some some ideas still uh, rolling around in my head. Um, so you know, the next session, if we would had have had this this week, like today actually, um, mm-hmm. then uh, you know, then I would probably have had been a little bit more unprepared than I'd like to be. Um, but but yeah, but no. Speaking of next session, I have a question from Amanda actually. Uh, how open is Nesta going to be to the idea of more undead around the camp? Now that that's firmly possible. She doesn't love that idea. And she is very, <laughs> like, I'm not even going to say mildly. She is, like, severely horrified that the IAC has put that in, like, your job description. 
I mean, I, <laughs> I just made that up, by the way. Yeah, Marty, exactly. Marty, that was not part of Marty's law. I just made that up. I, I, like, I don't, I don't know. Based on from. it was based on sort of my understanding of like how the IAC operates and the kind of thing they'd want to do. But like, are you okay with that being kind of Marty? <laughs> I mean, that doesn't <laughs> sound like the IAC at all. You know, why would they do things like that? <laughs> it, it's it, yeah. <laughs> like she is very aware that the IAC is like run by a bunch of I don't know chickens in a lab coat um, <laughs> but like that in particular she's horrified she's like no <laughs> I no. mean I mean to be fair um, um, oh, maybe I should I don't even remember but Adam you came up with a name for a school I think that he went to and a specific department uh, in the yeah, IAC Barrier University in- for uh is it something in the deathly arts yeah and um you know i'm just like yeah i you know that's just something that came from you and i'm like i'm i'm so far i'm loving it so you know just roll with it it's fine uh um, yeah i just write shit in my backstory and make stuff up yeah <laughs> <laughs> um no i mean i really liked it because i mean it it makes sense it, it's not something that would be so out you didn't come up with something that's so outlandish that it wouldn't fit into Baraguro, so I'm just like, yeah, no, that that makes sense. Um, let's run with that. So, actually, you know, what? as we're um, as we're doing a bit more of a free form last order this time, maybe it's worth talking about that a little bit. Yeah, sure. Because uh, I think you you two both know that my background is like in, in TTRPGs is heavily skewed towards Exalted, which is quite a different system to dungeons and dragons and there's some aspects of that that is like now when i watch myself back in my play it's like clearly coming through so so that for example uh there's a mechanic in exalted where players can just introduce facts i.e like i the player just want the world to be this way so i'm going to like roll my character's intelligence law and if i roll high enough and the gm doesn't veto it like then then that fact like i've just made that be how the world works mm. Which sort I of, like that concept. yeah, I think I think as you've seen, like it sort of does come through in my play that I'm kind of used to, like in my regular games, I'm used to being able to do this thing. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm I'm not against that either. I think it, I actually, I, I mean, it, it it plays into the whole. I think some people think that you know this is the DM story, and at the end of the day, it, it really isn't. It's everyone's story uh, because everyone is contributing everything. Every, you know, I'm the DM. Me, I'm I'm not in charge of your characters. I don't know what they're doing. I don't know really know where they're coming from originally, at least. Uh, obviously, you you have told me about your characters, and then I might have adjusted. You know, small things here and there, if need be. But besides that. This is like a collaborative thing. This story is not mine. This story, story is ours. Um, so, so no, I, I totally like that idea. I also like a, something that I feel like is so, sort of like in the same vein uh, that I saw on TikTok is you know uh, a rule called "I have a friend." Um, mm. Yeah, Amanda, I think you. I sent it to you. Um, where when you're stuck in in the storyline or something like that and you're not quite sure what to do you can just be the player can once be like actually i have a friend maybe we can go you know they live over here and just come up with you know a friend that they might know that can help them and um and i kind of like that idea as well because you know it, it adds to the world it adds to the story and and it can also be a tool if if you're stuck you know so um I, I like I like that. I like when everyone is is contributing to to the story soon. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I do too. No, it's good, and I love what you're doing, Adam. Like with with Strix and like this information that's coming in. Like, I think it's really cool. Um, and I really wish that I was better at like coming up with things like at the drop of a hat, like the name of something or <laughs> or any of that information. But I'm just like creating on top of acting is very difficult <laughs> improv <laughs> yes i'm not very good at it i almost signed up for improv classes actually just uh as an aside but i couldn't be arse driving into belfast once a week at night time mm. i mean I, I actually don't know what's around here but i actually think that i, w- I would i would like to go and have a go at it as well because it, 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 i feel like it's something where i'm struggling with it but i'm not if that makes sense i think that pr- 
caught on the spot, I can I can totally do it. I mean, I have actually I have basically improved a whole session once just because the players decided to do something completely different. Um, what are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> um, so I mean, so I, I know that I can do it, but I think just getting some tools, some something that can help me would be mm-hmm. amazing. You know, so I did recently see. Uh, sorry, just as an aside, um, a improv for TTRPGer uh, mm. class going up. Um, and I need to find it. It's one of the many discords that I'm in because I was like, oh, I should. Um, I saw it on my phone. And I was like, I'll remember to do that when I'm on my computer. Spoiler alert, I did not. <laughs> yeah. Um. Uh, could you drop me the link for that as well, actually? Cause... If I find it, I absolutely will. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... So, our uh, community question from Adam is, uh, which NPC is your character most fond of? So, any of the NPCs that you've met so far? You know, (laughs) obviously, I know everyone wants to say Thrak, um, but... (laughs) 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 No, are are there any, like, favorite NPCs so far? Neza likes Mm Orr. Neza hates everyone else. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> which that's, that's great uh, Marty you made fair, my yeah. character feel things yeah, that's fair that's fair <laughs> uh, I'm not allowing Strix to say he's undead because that's an obvious and cheap answer <laughs> <laughs> even though that is, like, that is the, the, the literal answer even if, uh, if they even count as NPCs I don't mm-hmm. know um, but in terms of like Actual NPCs. I mean, who has Strix met? He has met Thrak, and he has met Wortham. Wortham. He met Wortham. And he's Orban. met uh, what's the name? Um, Kaxi. Auburn's yeah, Kaxi. Mm. Auburn's wink, wink. <laughs> 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 uh, I don't know. I should. I w- definitely would have thought about this at a time. Uh, <laughs> not Wartham. No. Definitely not Wartham. Mm. I mean, I guess he's met Or as well, and yeah, he's not really interact. He's 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 barely interacted with, like, well, he's barely interacted with Kaxi. Mm. Barely interacted with Or. Or it's like one way. I have understood what she was talking about, but never been able to talk no. to no. Or. It's okay. You can say no one. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. It's fine. You don't have to just uh, figure something out. Yeah, I'm gonna pat. <laughs> yeah, that's totally fine. Um, right. Um, what? What's a TTRPG you haven't played yet that you really like to try? I know. I know my answer to this. Um, so if if nobody else have a, an answer right now, I can jump straight into mine. Um, in the eighties. In the 80s, there was this uh, anime called Robotech. Don't know if any of you knows it, knows it about it. I think so. Okay, it's basically the one of the first animes that that made it and that made anime come to the to the West. Um, mm. And I just love it. It has mechs in it, uh, planes that turn into robots, um, and I just love. I do know this, by the way. Yeah. I just love the robot. I've rewatched it uh, grown up, and I still like it, even though you can you can you can see that it probably hasn't aged super well. <laughs> it is from the eighties, after all, but still, mm-hmm. I really like the world, and I like the, the the concept of it. And I recently found out that they have a TTRPG uh, book as well, so I obviously had to order it. Uh, there was no you know couldn't couldn't not uh, order it, so I did. It was probably a little bit overpriced, but I didn't care, and it looks awesome and I would love to do something being a one shot being a, a small campaign uh, or a small adventure or something I, I don't know but I would love to to, to do something in that, in that world and, and also just try out the system I'm not completely sure what it is yet but um, but it's not it's not uh, Dungeons and Dragons so um, yeah I, I, would lo- I would I would love to, I would do that mm-hmm. well you know uh, where to find some players if you want to play <laughs> <laughs> Um, mine is Brindlewood Bay. It is a cozy mystery TTRPG where you're playing as a group of probably old ladies who have a book club 
Um, but then there's a murder in the town and you, you kind of solve the murder as these like old lady personas. Um, I backed it on Kickstarter. I do have the PDFs, but I'm waiting for my physical hardback to come um, so that I can properly get into it because I absolutely will be running something for that because it's, I'm just like mysteries, old ladies, Agatha Christie, murder she wrote, I'm in. <laughs> like this is my jam. I'm so excited for it. Hmm. Um, I'm in their very, very, very active Discord, and I cannot keep up. Um, <laughs> I, I've never seen a more active Discord. I'm just like, they're, they're, oh, okay. And I'm like, I'm going to do it. And then like within an hour, there's too many messages, and I'm just like, no, I can't do it. I can't do it. <laughs> um, so yeah, like that one. And I'm also uh, playing in uh, an actual play on Twitch in June um, for Warhammer Age of Sigmar Soulbound. Um, which I signed up for on a whim, got accepted, and discovered today is Warhammer. Um, so I have <laughs> no idea anything about this system. So I need to. Um, I have a month. To uh, learn. Do you know about the setting? Because from what it, from what I know, GW settings are quite in depth. Age. My I asked my friends who are very into Warhammer. <laughs> Age of Sigmar is the new fantasy universe of Warhammer. It replaced their fantasy line and added a bunch of cool stuff. Really neat background to the merging of worlds and gates. Actually, I got asked to be on a, an actual play as well, and I didn't realize because it was on Reddit and I'm not on Reddit super often. So I got asked, I don't know, a few weeks ago. So I, I might try, I might re reply to them in here if they're still if they still mm -hmm. have something going on, but I don't know what they actually are going to play. Um, yeah. Could I'm be fun. Playing Warhammer. Yeah. Adam, anything? You tried them all, right? So. <laughs> yes, I have played every TTRPG. <laughs> so which one is the best? I believe that. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the question. Right, right. <laughs> um, no, in terms of what I'd... Um, one I'd really want to try. Uh, Changeling the Dreaming has been on my list to try for a, for, for a good long while. Mm. It's one of the more obscure uh, World of Darkness type games. So it's, mm -hmm. it's set in the same world as, as Vampire the Masquerade and, and Werewolf the Apocalypse and, and all those. Um, but you play Fae. Um, and um, I think oh, what, what drew me to it the most is that like there's this a conflict that's baked into the to the system of um, like trying to 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 stay true to your sort of authentic fae, like childlike, uh, like sense of wonder, self, and not succumbing to the to the banality of, I guess, like adult life and like having to file taxes and things, um, and that that conflict. Like uh, like having a system that deals with that conflict definitely appealed to me and got me interested. And then I watched a few actual plays, and now I really want to play it. Awesome. That sounds really cool. Mm. I love the idea of like staying true to your child, like your inner child. Mm. I so yeah, if you want players, like <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll come join as well. I don't know if I want to run a system I've never even played. I mean, <laughs> if all, if none of us have played it, you know, then it can could be fun, you know. Then we mm, just volunteer maybe. someone to GM, mm. and um, <laughs> that's that. Yeah. I think also if you know something that I would love to do on our channel as well at some point, if you know. Probably not like a full campaign or anything, but something I think if you just if you were just going to maybe do some one shots or or, or, or again sh again shorter adventures, then there's two things that I would I would lo I would love to do. One of them is kids on bikes, mm -hmm. um, because mm -hmm. I just like again I, I I'm, I'm an '80s child. I love those '80s movies, E.T. Uh, you know uh, the Steven Spielberg movie stuff like that. Stephen King as well. Um, so that whole Stranger Things is you know a big hit with me as well so it could be fun to do something in you know in a, in a, in a similar vein um, and i think that it's a, it's a fairly simple uh, system that you can easily jump into and and just have some fun with so i would love mm -hmm. to do that i know that rick has played quite a bit of kids on bikes mm -hmm. 
Um, mm. So maybe we can. Uh, maybe sweet, they can DM. Talk them into yeah. GMing. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Could be fun. <laughs> um, and the other one is uh, Werewolf, uh, the Apocalypse. Um, mm. uh, it's terrible timing to play that now. It comes out in August, right? The new. Yeah, I think uh, there's a new one coming out new this year. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I would love, I would love to check that out, and and because that's where I, that's basically where I started. I didn't start with D and I started with Werewolf actually. So. Yes, I did know that. I did know that. Mm-hmm. You talk, I remember mm-hmm. now, like mm-hmm. like way back when you first interviewed me to be on this. <laughs> we talked about Werewolf. Yeah. Yeah. So. Yeah, I, they've announced the date now. It's August. Is it August? I know this right. because I make D10s, and it's a D10 system. There we go. <laughs> so cool. So, I um, basically need to get really into a D10 system so I can have a reason to buy your dice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, set up a werewolf game. Marty likes werewolf. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm very interested in playing in the werewolf campaign. There we go. So maybe, maybe uh, we can do that at some point. An idea that we have for the summer is to have mm. like happy hour sessions, which is like one shots, like th- shorter kind of. Mm sessions exploring like maybe different game systems and any t- basically any time that we're not like in a season um mm. we thought about we thought about that we haven't talked about it like what it actually looks like but we have talked about yeah the fact that it might be a thing that we consider yeah i'd be up for that yeah. definitely up for that and i think it could be especially as you can hmm? Like, because you don't need a regular cast, you can just sort of drop in. Yeah, yeah, but like, I mean, it, it could be as well. it could be other people like, from our community that that wants to join or, mm. or something like that, and it could be well, yeah, it could yeah. be cool if other people DM as well, you know. Uh, mm-hmm. So, so I can, I can, I can play. No, sorry for every oh. DM. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'll give you a relatively short list of systems I'd be comfortable to have. <laughs> Fair enough. I mean. To, to, to be fair, I, I ha- I've only played, you know, Werewolf and D&D, basically. So, you know, trying something new would be amazing. I'm, I'm having my eye on, um, you know, the Project Black Flag as well, uh, because it, it looks kind of interesting. Actually, that's not true. I'm, I'm lying to you now. I actually played one session of um, Pathfinder 2. Um, oh, that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, because one of my friends wanted to check it out and also check out a Tailspire which is a, a, an online st- system uh, play, you can play through in, in, on Steam. Um, so you can, you can use mm-hmm. it to uh, play D&D, you can use it to play other uh, uh, TTRPGs as well. So it, it basically just makes a, a 3D, or you, or you set up a 3D world. So you can set up buildings, that's like the whole workshop. So if you, if you need a specific type of building and you're not good at building them yourself, you can grab one from over there and you know stuff like that. And then you can have a... a, a session in 3d um online um cool. which is pretty cool and we play and we wanted to try out pathfinder 2 which um we were playing level one characters and i could do so much stuff it was actually mm. pretty good fun as a as a as a just as a you know uh, a fighter to actually be able to oh i can i move and i can also hit oh and i can hit again whoa and you know <laughs> uh so sure obviously there is a, a you know a Doing a lot of things makes you also get a, a little bit of a uh, what's it called? Um, I want to say punishment, but that's not the right word. Um, penalty. Penalty. Thank you. Um, obviously, the more you do, you get a you you know you, you'll get a penalty, and I, and I suspect that when you level up, you can probably do something to lessen that penalty and stuff like that. But um, but as a level one character, it seemed pretty good fun to be fair. So that's so cool. Mm. So yeah, I hear there are final. The guides are finally back in stock on the Pathfinder website or the Pezo website. Oh so, really? Yeah. <laughs> I heard that rumor. Okay. I mean, I bought the humble bundle that had like uh, I don't know how many books. So I sure. have so many PDFs that I'm um, looking through. So. PDFs don't go out of stock. No, exactly. That's uh, true. But the the only I thing. Have so many PDFs. I just really like the physical book. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, I prefer the books as well, especially when you're you know making a character sheet and you need to go flip back and forth through the pages mm-hmm. to figure out you know stuff. It's really tedious to do in a PDF because I mean, yeah, it's it just is. <laughs> but yeah, um, I tend not to buy a physical. book. Book, unless I'm at least decently confident, I'm actually going to play the game. Exactly. 
just like me. So Which is um, a good habit to get into. <laughs> that's a very good point. I'm like, ooh, Kickstarters. Oh, well, I don't want to back it unless I can get the physical book. Exactly. Oh, well, I guess I'm dropping <laughs> another 50, 60, 70 pound on a Kickstarter that I may or may not play. <laughs> and I mean, this is my life. I'm like, why do I have no money? Oh, Kickstarter. I mean, and that's why I've already, you know, bought kits and bike and uh, uh, the Robotech one because obviously I'm 100% going to play those at some point, yeah. right? So mm -hmm. Definitely. Yeah. Is there a physical kids on bikes book? Yeah. Huh? I have it in my shelf over here behind me somewhere. <laughs> so. All right. Um, should we finish off with the random question that you asked Adam? If I can remember what it is. What was your favorite? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, yeah, okay. <laughs> what was your favorite uh, subject in school? Oh. Mine was modern fantasy English. Mm, um, it was like a, a specialist English course um, that the best English teacher in our entire high school took um, or taught. Um, and I took it, it was, sorry, we're, bear with me and my North American terms. It was a grade 12 course and I took it when I was in grade 11 and it was like the best English course that I had in my entire high school career. I learned more in that course than I did in any other course, um, like English course, because the English teachers were very, very bad. Um, like very, very bad. I was like, oh, this is what that means. <laughs> it was, um, but also it was a lot of fun. We got to study like Star Wars and The Princess Bride and um, do like our independent study on any book series that we wanted to do, um, so long as it was fantasy. It was great. That was absolutely my favorite course, followed by uh, history, like ancient medieval history. Is it throughout all your school time? So, so also like university and, and stuff like that, or is it just back in? Yeah, I think that's a, that's allowed. That's well, yeah, w w whatever works. Yeah. yeah. Because that changes my answer drastically. <laughs> well, give us, give us both of your answers. <laughs> because I think if it was back in just you know school as a kid, I think it actually was mathematics. Funny enough, um, mm. because um, I started out being really bad at it, and my teacher told me that or tell my parents that I would never be good at math. And then we got a new teacher, and then I got one of the best at math in school. So maybe it was a teacher issue and not so much a Marty mm. issue. Um, so I that. <laughs> I think that whole thing was the reason why I really, really liked math because, mm. you know, I was basically told that, yeah, this is not for you. And then I figured it out. So, um, but if it's throughout my whole uh, school time, uh, then I, multi multimedia uh, things, specifically streaming video, um, because we did that, we did like, and mind you, today streaming video is really, really easy to do. We do it every other week on, on uh, uh, the Crowded Tavern. But back then, it wasn't a thing. When we did it, it wasn't a thing. So we were actually, our school was among the first ones in Denmark to do like a live, start to do live streamed uh, uh, television <laughs> on the internet. Um, and we had like a, a full week where we had like a competition happening on the school. Uh, and we live streamed everything, um, not 24 hours, but probably like seven to eight hours a day or something like that, where we had, you know, obviously uh, 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 already taped stuff that we had pre-made, but also live interviews. We had like a host um, and we made so many pranks with each other. Uh, like one of the times we invited like an, an IT guy in to sit and talk about IT and be really used like words nobody would understand in IT and just and because the the, the host had like earpieces so we we're like you need to get him to talk you know talk normally nobody understands this and and the host is just you know out of their mind trying to get this person to to talk normally and and yeah was so stressed about it uh, so but yeah we told him it was a prank afterwards and he got it probably wasn't super happy but he got it <laughs> so yeah and adam was yours? um i guess so it, yeah if we're going for like uh high school secondary school type subject then it'd be the same answer uh like like mathematics i uh i don't i, I don't really have as good a reason as marty i just liked it like <laughs> i i do recreational mathematics in my spare time at secondary school like i know it's very nerdy like played a lot of um, 
like card games and poker, like like, like well, like poker, bridge, they're, they're like very mathematical card games as well, just because it was fun for me when I was a teenager. <laughs> yeah, I was Can strange. Relate, but um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, if we're going university courses, uh, probably game theory. Like if I'd gone into academia, that would definitely have been my area. Um, I really like the intersect, like again, super. Really like the intersection of economics and mathematics. Um, I guess it just, I don't know, makes sense to me in a way that, like, I don't, I don't know. I don't, I, yeah. I just, I, I really enjoy it because mm. I find it very intuitive. I think maybe is the right word. Mm. No idea why. That's yeah. really cool. People like you are very important in this world to help <laughs> the people like me. And by the way, kids, if you're sitting in math class and be like, I'll never use this weird thing that the teacher is teaching me right now ever again. Yes, you will. At some point, you probably will. Mm. Uh, because I remember getting a programmer job that all of a sudden I was sitting there. I know how to calculus, uh, calculate this specific thing. I learned this in school. How was it again? <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> so I have never yeah, had to uh, use yeah. math that I learned at an advanced level ever. Mm. Oh, really? Um, I yeah, I'd say, it, like, as somebody who's sort of obviously running a partnership business now, like, like, and as somebody who studied maths to a university level, like, in terms of, like, tax calculations and, and some of the financials we have to do, like, it's not like university level maths, but, like, even I don't find it trivial. Like, it's, it, like, when I'm filing taxes and things, it's like, no, nah, like, like, I, I flexed my mathematical muscles that day. Definitely. My accountant is um, the one and only thing that I outsource in my business. <laughs> I give him I my sheets and I say, thank you very much, Nigel. Here is your 750 pounds. Mm. It is the only thing I outsource. Mm. <laughs> and I do it because it will take me a really fucking long time to do it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there you go, you see, kids. Pay attention to your mathematics teacher and you can save yourself like a grand a year. Mm -hmm. It's true. It is true. It's true. Yeah. All right, I think that's all we had this week. I think we, we actually managed to just, you know, three people to fill out an hour. So go us. Yay. I know, I'm like, we could keep talking. We could, but... Uh, but also I'm really hungry. I'm really hungry too. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, if you have your own questions, I just want to be updated with new TikToks or all the stuff that we, we're doing uh, throughout the different weeks, uh, you can totally fo follow us on social media. And we are pretty much everywhere where you want to be at crowded tavern uh, you can also join our discord at uh, crowdedtavern.com forward slash discord uh, and you can find all the links you need to all of this at crowdedtavern.com so thank you so much for watching and listening amanda anything to add don't forget to like and subscribe and rate and review as much as you like there thank you go. very much there you go then marty will be happy. like those tiktoks and and shorts make marty happy exactly i'm checking checking the counter every hour to see if it's gone up or down so <laughs> he's um. not lying <laughs> so yeah thank you for watching thank you for listening and guys thank you for being here thank you thanks very much adam thank you. see you all next week no problem bye bye, bye.